We'll go ahead and get started. Good evening, everyone. This is Ron. Uh, this is Monday evening, one after six, so we'll go ahead and get started. Let's see if we have any questions. Uh, on yesterday, we, we talked about a number of things. We, we talked about gender quite a bit. I, I think, uh, again, as was mentioned yesterday, that was a, a necessary situation. We, we, we all talk about the, the inclusion of, 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 of everyone, uh, and Audrey and Sheldon have talked about some some literature some I think well, Sheldon's was an article and, and uh, uh, Audrey saw something online that she had gathered and and uh, but it was talking about uh, gender and 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 LBTQ relationships and and how uh, uh, they're being treated in the church and, and, and the inclusion of community being a part of the community, they've always been a part of the community, at least from the, uh, hopefully from the beginning. I don't want to uh, step out of bounds there by saying that, but uh, for at least a long time ago, prior to uh, there being uh, um, slavery in America and all of these things, these are things that are uh, way back in history with the indigenous people in their way of life and how things have changed now and how through whatever hatred or bigotry or whatever, the, the churches have moved to a position not to include everyone. Uh, we've become so judgmental. So we, we discussed that last couple of days and uh, a number of other things that uh, I probably don't remember the details of right now, but uh, anyone Anyone uh, want want to speak on anything that was said yesterday or or Saturday for that matter? Any questions or comments? Okay. Well, uh, any new topics? Any any questions or comments or anything you may have uh, witnessed? I just have a question on that uh, you'd like to discuss. Uh, Ron, I have a question. Okay. Uh, Zechariah 1 and 19. Okay, take me a minute to get there. Read it, read it for me. You say 1 okay, and 19? Uh-huh, I'm reading from a study Bible. Uh, and it's talking about visions of the horn, of, ho of the horns. Okay. You there? I'm I'm still looking. Zachariah ain't ain't book that I look at often. What's read it? Read it, Kathy. Let's let's hear it. Okay. Okay. It says my study Bible says. Then I looked up and saw four animal horns. I asked the angel who was talking with me. Uh, what are these? He said, these are the horns that scattered the people of Judah, Israel, and Jerusalem. Then the Lord showed me four craftsmen. I asked, what are they coming to do? He answered, they have come to scare and throw down the horns. These horns scattered in the people of Judah so that no one could even lift up his head. These horns stand for the nations that attacked the people of Judah and scattered them. I was wanting to know what are your thoughts about the horn? That's I'll be on. Anybody else? Pastor, are you on? Okay, well well if anybody else can speak to this, I I'll, I will be totally honest with you as I have said in the past, I if I don't know I'm gonna tell you I don't know and I can quickly tell you I'm not familiar with this. Oh uh, okay. I, I know they they uh of course, it's it's a metaphor for something else, and and uh, I'm gonna write this down. And uh, if Pastor or anybody else gets on in the meantime that that cares to speak to it, we will certainly listen. Uh, okay. 
and I, I'm sorry, I, I, I don't know. Uh, I start at verse 18, 18 through 24. Mm-hmm. It sounds a lot like Revelation horns you yeah. don't know what what these four horns uh, represent here. Um, the four kings made I, it. Let, I read it. Another it Bible it said it said nations. It, it, well, it okay. said nations, but I was wanting to know if you you know your thoughts any more towards. And I know it's a metaphor for no, something, I'm, but not real. Oh. I, I, we, we've studied from Zachariah in the past, but it's been so long ago, Kathy, I don't remember. So I, oh, okay. I have to look at it. Is there anyone else that may have some insight into this? Okay. Um, yeah, I like to say if the pastor gets on, we'll we'll see if he uh, has any any revelation on it. And if not, we will get you an answer. We'll discuss it at, at a later time, but we're not going to forget it. Oh, okay, that'd be fine. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No, well, thank you. Love the questions. I just sorry I couldn't answer this one, but thank you. And anyone else? Any other questions? Okay. Like I said, I don't know if uh, I haven't spoken with Pastor today. I don't know if he'd be here. Um, I actually wanted to kind of go down a rabbit hole today, and uh, Pastor's not on, and I don't know if any of the other other teachers. All right, but I want to show you something, an article that I saw that I thought was pretty interesting. And uh, i read it to you, and we'll go from there, okay? First, what I'm going to do is I'm going to, because I, I don't want to assume that uh, everyone is on the same page, okay? So there, there are a couple of, uh, couple of, uh, scriptures I'm going to read to you, and then I'm going to tie it together with the article, okay, if you guys don't mind. Uh, let's see here. Any other questions or comments before I, before I read this? The article is by a author that you hear me talk about quite often. Uh, a guy named Jeff Benner, and, and you've heard uh, some of the other teachers mention him as well. But uh, he's one of the guys that studies Aramaic and and uh, trying to clear some things up for me sometimes, not just by giving definitions, but he sort of gives examples and open things up sometimes so you can understand. Uh, with certain things. So if I see an article or something he's done, it usually kind of grabs my attention. So uh, I'm going to read this. Then, uh, like I said, I'm going to tie it together because I, I, I don't want to take for granted everybody know what we're, what's, uh, you know, the, the scripture here, know what's going on. This is a, a article that he wrote on Mount Sinai. And, and you know, Mount Sinai was uh, the, the mountain uh, I can go to, where is it? Well, th- th- let me just read this verse. It says, uh, I'm in Exodus 19. And it says, and you guys don't have to flip that because I got a couple of couple of verses I'm going to read. I'm just pointing this out to you so you know where I'm coming from. And the Lord came down on Mount Sinai to the top of the mountain, and the Lord spoke to Moses at the top of the mountain, and Moses went up. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and said, Go down and warn the people, lest they break 
threw to the Lord the gaze, and many of them perished. So Mount Sinai was, when they were coming out of uh, Egypt, was a mountain that God asked them to meet him, had the people to meet him on, okay? Uh, let me let me tie it together with something, though, that you probably did not know or didn't pay attention to. I'm also in chapter 3 of Exodus. It says, now Moses was pasturing the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. Now, this is after Moses has killed the the uh, the Egyptian, and he has fled Egypt. And he, he comes to the desert, and he meets Jethro and his daughters, and he ends up marrying one of Jethro's daughters. So he's pastoring Jethro's flock. So Moses pastoring the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the west side of the wilderness and came to Horab, the mountain of God. See, a lot of people don't recognize that uh, uh, the mountain that he uh, was around when he, he uh, at the base of when he saw the burning bush or uh, Mount Horab is the same as Mount Sinai. Just a different name for it. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blaze of fire from the midst of the bush, of a bush, and he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, yet the bush was not consumed. So you guys are familiar with it. I just want to kind of tie those verses together before I read this article. Now listen to this. It says, Mount Sinai, which is in Exodus, uh, or 1920, the verse I read for you, is the mountain that Israel met with God upon leaving Egypt. The word Sinai is from strong, Hebrew strong, 5514, means thorn. The word comes from the parent root, sinew, which means thorn also. The word derives from, derives from the parent root, sinew, means thorn bush. The bush that Moses saw burning in Exodus 3 and 2 is, sin, is a sinew, a, a thorn bush. It was not just a burning bush, but a burning thorn bush. Mount Sinai is also count, called Mount Horeb. That's what I was showing you earlier. Uh, those, were, were, those two mountains are the same mountain. Uh, the Hebrew word for Horeb, which is... Uh, he, strong Hebrew 27, 22 comes from the root word horev, uh, which means to lay waste or to be dried up or to be uh, or to fight as well as to fight. By definition, the word Sinai and horev are synonymous as a dry wasteland is often filled with thorn bushes. But there is also an interesting connection between the Garden of Eden in Mount Sinai. When Adam and Eve were expelled from the garden, God placed a flame of sword at his entrance. The Hebrew word for sword is harif, uh, uh, which means something sharp or sword, which comes from the same root as horab, means to fight or to make waste. As the word horab, wasteland, which also uh, called Sinai, a thorn thorn, the burning thorn bush of Exodus, is a picture of a flaming sword. It is a picture of the flaming sword of Genesis. And he concludes by saying, is it possible that the burning bush and the flaming sword are one and the same? Was Mount Sinai the entrance to the Garden of Eden? I thought that was interesting. Oh, uh, and, 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 of course, uh, for anyone who uh, who may not be familiar with it, the flame and sword, is, you, you can pick up in Genesis 3 and 24. He said he drove the man out and, and he stationed a cherubim. And the flaming sword, which turned every direction to God, the way to the tree of life. So this is uh, the same flaming sword that is there once man is expelled from the garden to guard man from re-entering the garden, okay? Re-entering in the state that he is in, rather. 
So, but I, I thought that was interesting that he is comparing uh, the burning bush and the flaming sword of uh, being the burning bush being the entrance uh, to the Garden of Eden. Again, I just I just thought that was interesting. What are your thoughts on that? Is there anybody? And 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 if you care to, I I, I can uh, send the article so you can look the words up. He tried to to get, tell us what what where he got the information, looking at the strong words, strong concordance words, and uh, how they make that how he made that connection. But I just thought that was interesting. Any any thoughts? Well, on, I have a question. On... Yeah, yes, ma'am. Yeah, I have a question. So what was the purpose of the flame sword again? The flame and sword uh, that turned in every direction, he put was the, when he put the man out so that he could not return and eat from the tree of life. In other words, the state of mind that you're in is it, not saying that you cannot return. It's saying you cannot return as flesh and blood. In other words, you cannot return in, in the state that you're in. You have to be committed to return to this. Not through a religious mind, but you have to be committed. You have to want to enter from your soul. That was the purpose of it. And that's so what it means it by Elohim, Huh? So was it Elohim that put that energy out of the garden? Was it Elohim that put Adam out of the garden? Yes. 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 So, and Adam um, represent what again? Well, look at it. Look, look at it this way. If you want to, if you want to uh, look at it as us, everything in this scripture, and and that's what this was was so uh, kind of kind of stands out to me. Uh, everything in here is about us. Everything in, in here, you can only see, though, from an internal viewpoint. You can only see it with your eye. And you only get to that place when you decide, you make the decision to have the desire to give up who you are, give up your uh, earthliness, Give up your drive, give up your dreams, give up. You, when you have a desire to see who you are, you find God as you find yourself. And as you find yourself is when you see that I am connected to every man. And that moves you to a point as you grow to see that I am every man. So that from the individual part of you, uh, you do not see yourself, and in that state, you do not uh, uh, enter into the tree of life. Um, think about, uh, oh. go ahead. No, go ahead. I'll let you finish. No, I, I'm just, I'm just trying to, for us to see uh, what was taking place here, and and uh, and and from what we have always been taught. This we separate ourselves from these verses. We separate this and make it seem as though it's a history lesson. But this is the journey that each and every one of us go through. So as oh. the Adam. Hmm? Okay. So the so the Elohim that I am, and I'm looking. At, I, the reason why I asked that question because I have a follow up question. So we're the ones, the Elohim that we are. We're the ones that put that energy out of the garden yes and that's what i'm that's where i'm getting to because again all of this is us inner dialogue so we're the elohim that put the adam out of the garden of eden right east of eden but 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 um, look, look, look at the whole part of it you are all those things you are right. it is also it is also you that recognize that the fleshly part of you is cannot uh, supersede the Elohim that you are. It is the it is the Elohim that uh, 
enlightens that part of you that as you as we've witnessed ourselves growing uh, that has brought that that part that has been expelled from the garden bring that under submission and i don't like the word expelled but we 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 are we are both sides of this is what i'm trying to say it is not only that you are the elohim it is also that you are that human part of your mind that you're trying to bring into submission okay so and i see that and i yeah. when i when i hear scriptures being read i always vision me as elohim me being the god a god and it tells me how powerful I am to rule me and not someone else. So when I ask these questions, it's all about the internal dialogue that we have in our mind, you know, yeah, in our mind. So that's why I asked that question. Yeah. Um, it, 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 it's, it's rather intriguing, isn't it, though, to, to look at the the, the uh, question that he proposed to us uh, as, as you as you're saying as you view this internally what do you see you and see Ron, I mean? to me this is what yeah and to me this is what brings the uh, the scriptures alive when I see it with the eye internally I can see it. And and to me, that's what brings the scriptures alive in my life. I don't know about I don't know about anybody else, but I've never seen the scriptures before the way we're doing it, and they never they never were alive to me until we learned that it is an internal dialogue, and that's who we are. So mm -hmm. I'm getting it. Thank thank you. Let's 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 look at this though. Let, let's look at it from Exodus first, uh, and and see where 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 this leads us. There is a being named Ronald Lamar Johnson. There is one named Evelyn. There is a Charles. There is a Kathy. All of us started off on this journey, and we wrestled, and we we went throughout our countryside, meaning we went throughout our region that we were. Uh, 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 we were conscious of our awareness, and and we started feeling uncomfortable in the things we were aware of, meaning that I, you know, I I see that this thing called religion, this thing called God, doesn't quite fit what is inside of me that is that I'm not familiar with yet, but that's making me feel restless. So as I feel restless. It may lead me to other churches. It may lead me to do other studies, but it, it push, pushes me into a place of action. And as I get pushed into this place of action, I start seeing uh, better who I am. And I move to the place where I kill the Egyptian. I kill my background. I kill the who religion and everything say that I am. And then I, when I make that decision, it, it dawns on me, I'm alone. I don't know where I am. I, I don't feel quite comfortable. So it takes me on another journey. And that journey takes me to the wilderness. And that purpose for taking me to my wilderness is so that I can ponder, so that I can see myself, so that I can open myself up more and hear that 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 voice that's been echoing in me for all my life. I now want to turn and see it. I've been 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 I've I've known it was there, but now I want to turn and see it. So when I journey, I end up uh my thoughts, my mind, my desire takes me in the whole realm. It takes me to the mountain of God. And and inside there, uh, it looks like uh, the reason why it looks like a wasteland. It looks like nothing's there because the only life that is is there is in me. I am the life. 
I am the life and everything else looks dry. It looks like there's, there's, there's nothing out there but desert. It, it doesn't look like there's anything to feed me, but everything comes from inside. So now as I turn, I turn to see this fire that's burning in me. What is this that's burning in me? What is this that, that, that has gotten my attention so much and, and uh, it, it makes me uh, 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 recognize, uh, it, even though it, in totality, I don't quite get it, but I recognize uh, this is something holy. This is something different. I feel it in my bones. It vibrates with me. I feel the rhythm of it. And though I, I don't quite know what it is, I fear it, meaning the reverence I have for it. Not that I'm afraid it's going to harm me, but I know that this is something greater than me. So I take off my shoes. And that means I am surrendering my authority. There is no reason for me to journey any further. There is no reason for me, uh, uh, as, as land is consciousness, I am at the place now where I am being renewed and I recognize it. So that is the, 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 the first place, this, this burning sword. And uh, it, 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 with him having somebody else's flock, meaning that here I was when I was in Egypt, I was a prince. I had it made in an earthly sense, in a churchly sense, to religion, I had it made. I was a person of authority. I had stuff. I had possessions. I had wealth. But now I'm a servant. I surrendered all that. And I'm flocking somebody else's sheep. And I'm not only uh, flocking someone else's sheep, I am a shepherd, meaning I'm not a hireling. I'm a shepherd. I treat these sheep as though they're my own. I will give my life for them. So you, 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 you see the internal journey. And although we, we can talk about this in five minutes, it, it is a lifetime journey. And I think as, as we have said, uh, we haven't said it today, back. But if you read the scripture, Jethro was in the wilderness with, with uh, not Jethro, Moses was in the, in the wilderness with Jethro and the family for 40 years. And that 40 just talks about a lifetime. So my first lifetime, uh, my first lifetime, I was, uh, 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 I spent in Egypt and I knew all the ways of Egypt. I conquered all that. And in conquering all that, it was not enough. It was not enough. And, 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 and that started the wrestling inside of me. And, and so if, if you look, he's comparing that burning bush and the flame and sword. Uh, and so I, do, I, do, do you see what, I, what, what he's getting at? At least from, from this perspective. This 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 place is uh, the the place that 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 Evelyn came when she found herself, when she saw herself, when she started really paying attention to those vibrations inside, and she started to look around and say, "This is for me. This is about me," and and in doing so, you you not only find Evelyn you find the creator and you see the connection to humanity. And you understand that all the stuff you've been taught in, 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 in our religious upbringing is being challenged now. And it's, and, and it's going to take some uprooting. All of it isn't uprooted at once. But as you can see, we, we're still in the midst of doing that. That's what happens at the mountain. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure somebody can add something to that. If, uh, any thoughts or questions or anything? Nobody? I don't want to talk to Well, I feel that you explained it very well. 
um, maybe maybe no one else needs to comment on it, but I got it and I appreciate it. Yeah, you did yeah. quite a good job of explaining that, Ron. Well, thank you. Oh, I, it, when, when I read this, it really kind of, it kind of blew my mind and it kind of lit me up at the same time. And I, and I, I thought, wow, wow, I like that. I like that. That, that would make a good discussion. That would make a good discussion. So as, as we, we, we look at it from the other perspective, uh, the, the, the burning, uh, the, the, the flame is sword, uh, uh, again, uh, God put this there so that man could not enter in and eat from the tree of life. So uh, we, we look at this thing now, and, 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 the, and the funny thing is we have been taught that that is not an entrance. That is not something that we can re-enter. The Bible doesn't say that. It's not saying that you can't re-enter. It's, it's, it's saying who, what you have made yourself, what you are now, uh, you have created, uh, you have created distance within yourself. You are still covered by the creator, but you can't see it. You have brought confusion within yourself and, and, and until you desire to make this journey back, you cannot re-enter. You cannot come in here. So that journey, that journey from there, uh, if you look at the atom, that journey from that place takes you takes you to another place. It takes you, uh, if you can look at it, if you can look at where Adam goes, he's clothed in skin, uh, and the next time we, we, the next significant thing, I guess we hear, uh, uh, it, it's where it talks about Cain and Abel. And where it talks about Cain and Abel, that's a very interesting uh, some dialogue there, which which was another lesson I want to get into. But uh, if you can see, Cain and Abel represents the thoughts of the Adam. They 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 show you uh, again the wrestling uh, as I as I talked about Moses killing the Egyptian. Cain and Abel shows you the wrestling. Cain represents the mind. Cain represents that part of Adam that wants to take shortcuts. The first thing he says, he names the animals and he says to subdue them. It, this is talking about inside of you. That is why uh, when he, uh, uh, it, it is not good for man to be alone. He brings the, atom, the animals to him. We, we've discussed that before. These or uh, uh, if, if you look at how the animals are used in the scriptures, these are talking about man. This is talking about the journey of man. So the funny thing was, was, was uh, it talks about uh, Cain being a tiller of the ground. But if he were the oldest son, if he is the oldest son, and I'm following from a story perspective, it was his obligation to subdue the animals. So why is it that Abel was the one that, that kept the flock? That's the, the hit of it right there. So if, 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 if Cain did not know how to keep the flock, How can he be a tiller of the ground? How can he till the ground, which means uh, 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 fertilize uh, uh, the ground that, that man will travel on so that there can be enlightenment? 
fertilize, I mean, or, or, or turn over the soil so that when it rains, that there will be, be growth, that there be aeration in the soil and, and there, there will be growth that comes up. How can he do that when he doesn't know himself? So he represents the mind. He represents religion. And that shows you where Adam is. The other one, the one that is killed, Abel, inside of Adam, represents the immaturity of Adam. And the immaturity rep, uh, uh, is showing you that the spiritual side of him that Abel is, that soulful side of him, he does not allow to mature. It is the second son. It is the youngest, and he kills it off. He does not allow it to mature in him. So this is not just talking about these two boys. This is talking about the thoughts and the mind of Adam. So it, it, it moves on, and, and the journey starts from there when it gets to Seth. Because I think in the next chapter we've discussed before, uh, Seth represents that balance. Theft represents that part, that soulful self part of you that, that recognize that you need balance. Uh, theft is uh, hopefully uh, more of the more of the soulful side of you than the mindful side of you. But it, it is the part of you that shows the balance that it, I have a desire to move in this direction. I have a desire to grow. So it shows in the next chapter, it says this is the genealogy of Adam, and it starts with Seth. He has a desire to move forward. And from there, we see other things that takes place. But a lot of the, uh, 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 the journey back, as you can contest to with your own life, is not just in, in envisioning things, those visions that we have, those periods of enlightenment that we have, comes with turmoil. So as you see in, in the life of, 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 of uh, those who come after Adam, there are battles. There are battles inside of us. Even when we get to Abraham, there are battles. There are battles, and, and, and there are stumbling blocks, and, and, and uh, this, this journey is 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 full of opportunity, desire, and and uh, what else? What else am I trying to say? I, I guess what I'm trying to say is 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 not what it has been painted to be. There is turmoil, but it is how you learn. It is the thing that leads us to uh, enlightenment. So the two are connected together in that way that what what the Adam goes through is what leads you to Mount Horab. Uh, it, it is the journey that he's on, but it is the journey that the righteous man is on. So I, I see how he reached the conclusion that he did. Uh, and I agree with him. And I know it's a lot in here I'm not seeing. Uh, but but I I I love that uh, how he how he found that. But I don't want to do all the talking. Someone else, anybody questions or comments? Ron, this is Ramel. I have a question. Um, yes, thank you for that because it 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 helped me to understand even better. The thing mm -hmm. that came to my mind is. Is this also the same experience of the prodigal son? Good question. That being yes, actually, yeah. I'm that sorry, being I thought you were the son done. went out to uh, see what was out there, for lack of a better term, but had ended up making the journey back home, which is what we're all doing. Yeah, that if, if you if, if we can't see ourselves in the prodigal son, I mean, he 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 has he 
here, here, here's the the beauty of of the prodigal son to me anyway. And there's there's more in, into this. Uh, he he's blind. He's blind. He doesn't recognize who he is or what he has. And that that blindness. What made him blind? What made him blind was greed and selfishness. And he does not see who his father is. He does not see who he is. So he says, this is mine. Give me what is mine. I want my inheritance. How do you have an inheritance when your father still lives? What is it that you want? So so, so um, he reached that age where he wanted, this is my story title to it because I am your firstborn. Give this to me. So his father gives it to him. But what does he miss? Because of his greed, because of his selfishness, he doesn't recognize that the gift is spiritual. It is not material. The gift is that I am the oldest son. The gift is that I am responsible for everyone in this family. The gift is that I have all, 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 uh, the, 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 the spiritual insight to guide my family, to run this family, not just the stuff. But he separated that part of it. He separates and he never sees the, the responsible part of it. He never sees uh, uh, who he truly is. He cannot see that part because he sees what's shiny. He sees the glitter and the gold in front of him, and he takes off with it. And, 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 and he looks, and it looks like to him, like it does to a lot of us, especially when we're young, like, Everybody else has it made. The grass certainly is greener. So I'm going to take my stuff and I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to spend my stuff over here and I'm going to spend my time. And, and, and he has this unrighteous living. And he sees that all this stuff that he has has a finite ending. Whereas if he has seen the spiritual side of it, your wealth does not run out. And I don't mean that the physical stuff, but but that's the, the, the metaphor, the way it is written. That's how I'm trying to explain it to you. So so when he looks at this and and uh, not recognize it, he quickly runs out of stuff because uh, uh, his vision was through his eyes and not his eye, and that made all his stuff uh, 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 more material. Than, than it was intended for him to be, intended to be. So what does he find himself doing? The pigs are an example of going to your lowest point. Going to your lowest point. There was no place to go but up. But he has the insight. It, it was at that lowest point, and that's what I meant by the journey. If you look at the the the, the journey of Adam, the journey down living with the pigs is what opened his eyes, and he says, "Look at what I had. Look at who I was." And he starts the journey. He had descended down. He lowered himself. And he starts to ascend back up. He starts in a more, uh, uh, the pigs humbled him. And he goes back and he's humbled now. And, and, and uh, instead of being judgmental, his father runs out and greets him. And not only is he restored, because of his humbleness, because of his, 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 his eyes being open, he's brought back in a position now that he's elevated. It's all spiritual. It's all spiritual. 
And and every one of these journeys, in one shape or another, we all take. But yes, that is a great example of this. Even when we we look at the journey of uh, what did that fellow name Job, we look at the journey of Job. Job was was happy uh, in religion. Job had everything. Look at his family. Look at his barns. Look at look at his marriage. Look at everything he had. But something wasn't settled in him. Something wasn't settled. The godliness in him, the Elohim in him says, have you considered my servant Job? He invites it because he wants to see more. And all those little friends that come by and see him and everybody that threw their two cents at him, and, and, and was trying to talk to him. Those were the religious thoughts that he's having. All those things that, that, that pops up in our head when we look back at our past, when we think about the, 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 the positions we were in, when we think about our lives before, when we think about what we believed in, when we think about where we are now and we can't see our, 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 our way out, All those conversations, and and he battles through them. He battles through it. And what does he end up doing? He ends up having a conversation with God, having a co- internal conversation with Elohim, having an internal conversation and recognizing who, recognizing who he is, and and it doesn't mean that all those bonds were all those material homes and even his children physically it means that he no longer saw them through the eyes of religion he no longer saw material things as being something that that set him apart from anybody he no longer saw his 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 uh, 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 uh children and and and, and all those or uh, uh, people in his life uh, uh, through the eyes of religion, meaning that uh, uh, my my life is being good. I'm being blessed because I got all this stuff. He saw that he was Elohim, and he saw that it, the offspring that he had was just as much a part of him as he was a part of them and as part of the community, and and all of that. Is part of the responsibility. All of that is a part of his thoughts. All of that is a part of the consciousness that he represents. It opened his eyes, and he was able to see things from a totally different perspective. Does that not show where we are? does thank you again no thank you um yeah i I hope this made sense again if i can think of all look at that question uh, look at that that article again because i think it's it's more you know yes i I thought about barb and i read it and almost sent it to and i forgot last night because she's usually good at stuff like that when she sees that. Uh, but uh, maybe maybe we'll get a chance to talk about it again. But I, I, I say this to us. Um, I think we're in a good place. By our desire to see balance by our desire to see harmony and be love and kindness and and and, and, and who we are. And think about it because this is 
the choices that we've made, but we have sacrificed a lot. And, and that's the part I hope uh, to talk about again at some point. Uh, and, 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 uh, but the sacrifice has gained so much. It has gained so much. Look at who we are now, not in a boastful way, but in a way of responsibility. We're in a place I, I see that uh, we are seeing who the creator designed man to be. And uh, there is no better place to be in the earth. Oh. I hope this has all made sense to you. I hope all questions, questions or comments. I'm not cutting you off at all. Hey, Ron, this is Charles. I got a question. Okay. It, 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 uh, I don't forgot what scripture that was in when God said, I say ye are gods, but we uh -huh. live in like mere men. And yeah. the way I saw it, I mean, it's just like uh, the prodigal son. He would whip the father. He would whip the God. And he was a God. But in, in, his, in, his, in his mind, he would want everything that the world could offer. So it made him start living like a mere man. Yeah. And then when he realized it, he more than that. He, he had come to the sense to see that he was more than that. He was a God. And that's um, what made him. I'm sorry, Charles. I, I, I cut you off. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, the only thing I was going to say, that's what made him go back home to be a servant. Yeah. Yeah, because, it, it, it'll, yeah. Because you know, Jesus said you got to be a servant. Yeah, and that's what he did. But God, but God saw more than that. God see more in us than we can see in our own self. Um, you remind me of something, though, Charles. The journey is very much necessary. Uh, the journey is what opens your eyes, and, yes, and I, every, yeah, uh, and 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 even those reflections that we have now, that you don't stay in your past, but you recognize who you are and how you got there, how we got here. Uh, that journey, for, for example, we as a people, and being brought over here on as as slaves uh when the chains were taken away we tried to find equality we tried to find a way to fit in and still are and just like with job uh the 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 the, the creator is saying that's not what i called you for that's not why i brought you here I didn't bring you here to fit in. I didn't bring you here to 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 look for somebody to, to make you their equal. I didn't bring you here so that you can follow somebody else's God. I brought you here to see who I am and to be my people. And I isolated you. And 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 you went through what you went through so that you could cry out to me and start to see who you are. So the beauty that I feel is that we are at that point now and we we represent so many people. Uh, the, 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 the lessons we have to bring the whole universe into the present time those who have died before us and those who are coming behind us hang on our words. And, and as we move, 
uh, keep your focus internal. How can I be the best Charles that I can be? How can I, Father, show me what I can do? Uh, again, uh, when when the other week when we were looking at the sacrifices, talking about Saul, remember the three things that that, that sacrifice represented. It represented free will. I I freely give this to you. It represents I volunteer to do it. No matter who else does this, I volunteer to do this. The third thing is I always give thanks. I thank you. I thank you, universe. I thank you, creator, that I am in this position. I could have been somewhere else, but I thank you that I am here. I am the one that gets to do this. It gets to serve you. So that's that's what these, uh, 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 like I said, I want to talk about them another time, those offerings and sacrifices are about. It had nothing to do with killing animals. It talks about killing the animals that you are. Killing those those animalistic instincts, killing those things that 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 you value. And I say those things you value. Why am, why am I putting that with value? Only each and every one of us can, can answer this. How much do you value anger when you get mad at somebody? How much do you have to have the last word? How much do you value being vindictive? Is that something that's in your treasure box? How much do you value greed and selfishness? Those are the things that need to be sacrificed. How much do you value that remnant of religion? How much do you value that thing inside of you that somebody hurt you 18 years ago that you have never released, that pops up in your mind every now and then, but you put it back in your treasure box because you're not ready to deal with it? That's what those sacrifices are about. The burnt offering says the whole thing has to be consumed with fire. But the whole part of you, the whole part of your being has to be purified. That's what those offerings are about. It ain't about no animals burning no bull up. The bull is in you. Makes sense. So that's who we are. That's where we are right now. Ron, if I may, uh, yes, George, sir. I just want to respond to what Charles said. I mean, the two scriptures that he spoke about, you know, when he talked about um, God saying that we are gods, is Psalm 82 6. Just wanted to mention that in terms of uh, that reading. And it was also in the Gospel of John, John 10, 34, which uh, speaks of, you know, that reference that Charles spoke about in terms of saying, are you not God? Now, I wanted to just sum it up because I think it was a lot of introspection for me tonight, Ron, in terms of your teaching and what has been said. But there was just uh, one statement that I wanted to um, mention that, you know, we are the same as our source. And if God is our source, our substance and supply, then it's saying that, you know, we are God because we come from God and you cannot be anything but God. And so when we come to that knowing, you know, that's the blessing in terms of being able to do some introspection in terms of what Charles mentioned and again, I'll just read that because Charles stated it in Psalms 82 6. I said, You are gods. You are all sons of the Most High, but you will die like mere mortals. You will fall like every other ruler. And, you know, when we read these uh, scriptures, Ron, sometimes I still have some um, reflection when it says, you you know you will die like uh, mere mortals, or it says you are sons 
but I look at it that you know, when you talked about gender, you know, we all are one yet many. So sometimes, you know, we can be um, not confused, but we can be sifted in terms of looking at it in one gender perspective. But if we all are one yet many, then I think it refers to both, as we have said in the past about our wounds, the father and the mothering parenting. So I think that there's some, you know, again, substance in what you talked tonight. And I say for me, it was a lot of introspection, but I just wanted to, you know, just uh, piggyback off the of child, Charles, because again, um, I think that's very important for us to know, you know, that we don't have to die like mere mortals or mere, mere humans, but we can be who we are in terms of um, Elohim. I just wanted to share those thoughts. Thank you for letting me share. Thank you, my brother. Uh, that That's what I love about who we are. Excuse me. Um, we, we all hear different things and, and, and uh, tie it all together. And uh, that's, that was very much needed to be added into that conversation. Thank you. Thank you and thank Charles. Yeah. And, and we are. It, 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 it's a concept that, that that still I think we 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 may not fully grasp yet. Uh, I am, I am, I am it. That's that's a powerful statement. And and uh, what does that mean? What does that mean? when you feel that. So we we are much a part of Murray and, and all the spirit to have. So thank you. Again, George and Charles, thank you. Anyone else, questions or comments? Well, I, I certainly hope everybody got a thought. Uh, and again, if you have a question, let me know uh, next time. And I will, uh, I will send out a text not only to Pastor, but to the teachers about uh, Zechariah 1, 18 through 21, and uh, so we can discuss it on next week. Okay. Okay. Uh, guys, I hope you have a great week. Uh, stay hydrated. It's going to be warm. At least here in the south. I don't know everybody's not in the south, but just just stay, just take care of yourself. Okay. I love you all. Thanks again, and look forward to Saturday. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye. Ready?